Magandang araw po sa lahat. Muli, welcome sa ating vlog at isang makabuluhang mga minuto na naman ang ating pagsasamasamahan to expose heresies, wrong doctrines, and to clarify things in the written word of God. Kaya tara, simulan na natin to. So ito po ang ating pag-aaralan ngayon. Part 88, Didn't the Catholic Church Give Us the Bible? Dr. Jenny Kim, Berkeley graduate and doctorate. So he is actually a doctorate from a prestigious school. So, uh, but he, dis- he doesn't lift up himself. Hindi, hindi siya nagmamayabang kasi uh, ang siya ay Bible believer and he believes the Bible as the final authority especially and uh, distinctly the King James Bible. So ito po yung issue sa Pilipinas na palaging binabrought up sa mga debate. Sinasabi nila, kami lang naman, eh, sabi ng Katoliko sa INC, eh kami nga nag-compile ng Bible para sa inyo. O tiga natin kung totoo ba yon. At kung totoo man yun, anong kahalagahan nun at paano ito makakaapekto sa ating pag-aaral at pag-unawa sa salita ng Diyos? Tara, simulan na natin tong video na to. All right. Now, some of you may have heard this argument before that the Catholic Church is the one responsible for giving us the Bible. So when you pull up verses to them showing them how to get saved, they're going to say this. They're going to look at you and they're going to say, well, the Catholic Church was the one that picked all the right books in your Bible. There was a Council of Nicaea, which is historically true, but it's only half true. The Council of Nicaea, they got together and they selected which book should go in your Bible. Because it's not just 66 books in your Bible. There were tons of books throughout that period that Christians had to reject or accept and put as part of their Bible. See, So then the Catholic Church was responsible for that. Thus, when you, the final authority who you should listen to is not what the Bible says. It should be what your priest says. It should be what the Pope says. It should be what the Catholic Council says. Because why? They were the ones that selected and gave us the Bible to begin with. Okay, so the premise is, because the Catholic Church, uh, sila yung pumili ng mga books sa Biblia, then papakinggan nyo sila. So sila dapat yung masunod at yung interpretation nila, yun yung susundin ng bawat isa pagdating sa salita ng Diyos. So yun yung, uh, yun yung pinaglalaban nila at gusto natin yung linawin ngayon, ano ba yung totoo sa mga bagay na to? So that's how they're gonna argue. And there's gonna be not just Catholics, but a whole bunch of atheists and lost people too. They're gonna try to put doubt in your Bible saying, how do you know you got the right books in your Bible? How do you know that this book is the word of God? You know, weren't they written by men, etc., etc. Well, let's look at, first of all, secularly speaking, all right, if you study manuscript evidence in history, it's not the Catholic Church that was responsible. Now, they played a part, but it was not mainly the Catholic Church. There was already too many manuscript evidence and saved Christians who already got the books for you before they, the Catholic Council of Nicaea started. That's right. The, one of the examples is the Ancient Dead Sea Scrolls by James van der Kam. All right? If you look at the Ancient Dead Sea Scrolls, they contain every single Old Testament book that matches your King James Bible, excluding the book of Esther, excluding the book of Esther. But they have every single other Old Testament book in your King James Bible. And this Dead Sea Scroll, they said supposedly it's supposed to be, according to some scholars, at the B.C.s, see, before Jesus Christ. So there's already one manuscript evidence. First of all, go to Nehemiah 8, though. Please go to Nehemiah chapter 8. But you'll notice who were the ones in charge of the scriptures. The ones in charge of the scriptures were the Levites. The one, they were the ones who bore up the uh, ark and kept the Old Testament and were responsible for a lot of the scribal writing. All right, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8. We will look at verse 7. Nehemiah chapter 8, we will look at verse 7. So this is long after the law of Moses. This is like after the Babylonian captivity. All right, so long time later. They still kept the Old Testament. Nehemiah 8, 7. Also, Jeshua and Benai, uh, Sherebiah, Jemin, Akub, Shabethai, Hudaijah, Meesai, Kalita, Azariah, Jezebel, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. See, they were the ones that held all the law of Moses. They were the ones that helped the Old Testament law. And the people stood in their place. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly. See that? The Levites were the one that held it. And gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Uh, verse 9, And Nehemiah, which is the Tershatha, and Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all 
the people this day is holy unto the Lord your God, mourn not nor weep, for all the people let, wept when they heard what? The words of the law. See, they were the ones that kept the word of God, those Old Testament Levites. Go to Deuteronomy 31, 31. We will look at verse 25. Deuteronomy 31, we will look at verse 25. Notice that the very first books of the Old Testament, all right, from Genesis to Deuteronomy, which is written by Moses, that it was all kept ever since the beginning to the Jewish Levites. Go to Deuteronomy 31, verse 25. Now Moses commanded the Levites, which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, saying, Take this book of the law and put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that he may be there for a witness against thee. See, so ever since the beginning of the Old Testament, near the end of the Old Testament, and even in the New Testament. Go to Romans 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3. Now, the oracles, uh, or oracle, is another word for saying getting something divine, a word from the divine, see? So, in a Christian sense, the Christian oracles, the word from God, where do we get that from? Go to Romans chapter 3, we'll look at verse 2. Romans chapter 3, verse 2. Uh, verse 1, what advantage then hath the Jew? So, it's talking about the Jew. Now, look at verse 2. Much every way chiefly, because that unto them were committed what? The oracles of God. So the point that he is trying to make, si Pastor James Kim po dito, he is pointing out to us na the Old Testament was compiled not by the Catholic Church, but by the Jews. Kasi they, sa kanila kinumit yung oracles of God. The giving of the law is given to the Jews. So sila po yan, the scribes, carefully handling those manuscripts, preserving them until this very day meron pa rin mga extant manuscripts sila. Okay? So they are very cautious in producing these manuscripts and copying it to the point na pag may nabasa silang word like Jehovah or Lord God Almighty, may point pa na sila'y maliligo. Okay? Nang buong katawan nila kasi they give reverence to the name of the Lord. So the point that he is trying to make ay para maintindihan natin, yung claim na yon. It's actually absurd if anyone who believes it na silang nag-compile at nagbigay talaga sa atin. That is absurdity. Okay? Hindi po talaga pepede. But let's listen to him. You see that? So, we see that historical evidence ever since the beginning of the Old Testament to near the end of the Old Testament and even at for the New Testament, the Jews were the ones who had the Word of God. And the Hebrew Masoretic Text is the technical name that, technically speaking, our King James Bible got it from, from the Jews, although there were many more manuscripts. But this is just, I'm just giving a bunch of manuscript evidence, see. All right, another person named Dr. Edward F. Hills, he's a scholar from Yale and Harvard, a scholar from Yale and Harvard. And uh, he, in his book called Believing Bible Study, if you look at pages five through nine, he gives historical explanations from, of every single book in the King James Bible, just King James Bible, every single book historical explanation from Genesis to Revelation may prevok siya online okay if you want to search him Doc, uh, Edward F. Hills okay meron siya mga pre PDFs and you can benefit from that historically speaking as a scholar that they are inspired by God given by inspiration of God while all the other books they are not and he gives a historical explanation too so we see also that scholars also know this fact from history not only that the majority of early churches, they agreed with a person named Athanasius that time, but the majority of early churches, that they agreed that the directly 66 books in your King James Bible today, they believe that they should be officially recognized as the Bible. This was before the Council of Nicaea and all that, see? And this is documented in several books. One is Believing Bible Study by Dr. Edward F. Hills, pages 5 through 9. And another one is by Dr. Lee Martin McDonald in page 381, his book called The Biblical Canon. Not only that, scripture also shows it. If you go to Acts 13, go to Acts chapter 13, we will look at verse 49. Acts chapter 13, we will look at verse 49. Notice that Christians were the ones, during the early church period, early Christians had the words of God. So why not? Because they were the ones when the Bible was written, they lived during that time. Why not use that as witnesses, as evidence, see? So go to Acts chapter 13. 
We will look at verse 49. Verse 49. And the word of the Lord was published throughout all the region. You see that? By the Christians. The word of the Lord. They had it. Uh, Colossians 3.16. Uh, we won't turn there for time's sake, but you can write that down. You can write that down. Colossians. Colossians 3.16. 3, Paul was telling the Christians that they had the word of Christ. And he told them, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. See, so the Christians had the word of God. Not only that, if you look at a book written by John Hentz in page 60 called History of the Lutheran Version, he gives a list of New Testament scriptures dating to the latter half of the second century, long before the Council of Nicaea, was discovered in the Ambrosian Library in Milan, Italy. They discovered that in 1740. And this second century list contains the exact 27 books of your New Testament in your King James Bible. See, so there's already too much historical manuscript evidence, and not only that, scriptural evidence as well. See, so we already know. So let's look at Isaiah 55, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 55, and we will look at verse 11. Once you have your hand in Isaiah 55, I want your second hand to go to Psalms 12. Psalms 12. One hand, Isaiah 55. The other hand, Psalms chapter 12. Now, here's something that we've got to understand, all right? Not only is there a manuscript evidence showing that we got the right books, we got to realize this too. We got to realize this, is that God himself, because we can argue manuscript evidence. Scholars will just argue back and forth. I realize that. This is just to simply show that we have secular evidence. That's all. But, we, but secular scholars are just going to argue back and forth. So here's our final conclusion. The reason why we believe we got the right books in our Bible is because what God said. See? God shows you what he would consider to be his word. See, That's why we can find out which book is right, which book is wrong. Now, let's first of all go to Isaiah 55. We'll go to 11. Isaiah 55, 11. The Bible says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So that verse says the word of God will continue. It will not be lost. It will not be void. It will be gone. It's, gonna, it's not going to be lost. Go to Psalms 12, 6 through 7. Psalms 12, 6 through 7. The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in the furnace of earth, purified seven times. The words of God are what? Verse 7. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. So God promised that his words will not be lost. Guess what? The gospel of Judas Iscariot and all these other extra books that Catholics would put in their Bible, how many generations have they been lost until they later found out? But this right here, this 66 books right here has been continued onward Amen. from beginning to end. Yun mga liwanag, okay? Yung mga ibang libro ng uh, Catholic Church like Judith, Maccabees, dinagdag lang nila 'yan. Okay? Kaya wag nilang sasabihin na mas marami yung books namin kasi kinuha lang dito sa amin yung libro ng mga Protestante. Hindi po, okay? Dinagdagan nila ang salita ng Diyos because they respect more their tradition more than what the word of God says. Okay? That's the main issue. They don't believe the word of God. They just use it for their own advantage. Until, I don't know if you heard about this, but they just recently discovered the gospel of Judas Iscariot. And just, uh, you know, about 10, probably 10 years ago, yeah, about 10 years back. And then they said, oh, right here, you know, we found it. Part of the word of God right here. Well, we know that can't be the word of God because for stinking 2,000 years, no one read that, yeah. you know? Yeah. See? So... We know we got the right books because these weren't lost. See? But all the other books, they were lost. Not only that, go to Revelation. Go to Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. Chapter 22, excuse me. It should be chapter 22. Chapter 22. So, we'll notice right here that in Revelation chapter 22, here's another thing you got to think about. Let me ask you this question. Will God ever bless a book that had mistakes in it, that had errors in it? No, he curses it. He curses people who mess with that book. 
But he blesses people who has the right book. Now let's go to Revelation 22, verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. Now look at this, all right? If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Look what God does. He doesn't bless those kind of people. He curses those kind of people if they have the But the application of Revelation chapter 22 ay in the future pa po. In the tribulation period. Okay, so mapalad pa rin yung mga nagdagdag sa Biblia po ngayon. Dahil kaya silang patawarin ng Panginoon dahil ang, ang panahon po na ito, dispensation of the grace of God, God's long-suffering is prevalent and is on the world today. That's why lahat ng mga nangyayari po dyan, it's just the groaning and travail of earth, of the world, because of our sins. Pero it is, it is not yet God's wrath. Okay, maliwanag po yan. Wrong book. Verse 19, And if any man shall take away the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. See that? People who take away the word of God. So if they have the wrong book, God curses them. He never blesses that. Never blesses that. He yeah. curses it. If your King James Bible is not the words of God, it's, got, it's wrong. You've got the wrong books and all that kind of stuff. Why in the world, when it started with England, England became the most pros prosperous nation that ever lived, and then transformed to America, and America became one of the most prosperous nations too because it started with the King James Bible. Yeah. Yeah. You think God is going to bless that kind of a system? No. They had the wrong book, but they got the right book. Amen. But isn't it amazing that with this economic crisis and crimes growing and then wrong doctrine spreading, it was occurring during the latter centuries when scholars came out and they said, we know better words, and they took out words from the King James Bible, right. added words, and then you have tons of modern versions out there. Right. You see yeah. that? So we see right here this, is that we know simply that we got the right books. Why? Because, one, God will never bless something that has a wrong book. God will never bless us. So I know I got the right books. Number two, we even have manuscript evidence and historical evidence, secular, secularly speaking. Number three, because God said that his word will not be lost. Amen. And all those other books, you know, out there were lost, see? Right. But we had this for every person, even today, in third world countries, they can get a King James Bible out of a dollar store, you right. see? So you notice right here that that's why we believe it. Here's something you want to add too. If the Catholic Church gave us the Bible, then tell them this. Then shouldn't you believe what this Bible says then? Yeah. And this Bible says mass is wrong. This Bible says that good works can't save you. This Bible shows that the Peter is not, not the first pope. So if you believe the Catholic Church gave us this, all right, agree with them. Say, okay, I believe the Catholic Church gave us this. And then tell them this. But your Catholic Church, they don't even follow that book. That's right. That, they don't know how to answer after that, see. And you're being more Catholic than they are, see. Because you're going by what the Catholic Church gave to you. But the Catholic Church itself are not even Catholic enough to follow this book that they supposedly picked, them, picked the books out themselves. Right. Okay, so maliwanag po doon sa paliwanag ni Pastor Jin Kim na Catholic Church, they claim that they gave the Bible to us, especially sa mga Protestant na humiwalay sa kanila. Okay? Pero according po sa Bible, listen. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, Knowing this verse, that no prophecy of the Scriptures is of any private interpretation. Okay? Kaya hindi nila pwedeng sabihin na Pope lang o kaya yung mga pari lang nila okay? ang pwede mag-interpret at nakakaalam ko anong tamang interpretation. Okay? And they will claim that their Pope is the Vicar of Christ Heaven's sake, that is not true. Maling-mali po yun. Okay, hindi siya ang kahalili ni Kristo dito sa lupa habang wala si Kristo. And they will claim that the keys ay binigay sa Pope. Okay? The keys of the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 16:19 was given to Peter. Then, ibinigay daw sa Pope, listen, we are not in the kingdom age. Wala tayo sa millennial kingdom. We are in the dispensation of the grace of of God. Okay? Yung kiss na yon, totoo, binigay yung kay Peter, and hindi niya pinasa yon sa mga Pope. or um, Peter is not even the first Pope. Sabi ng Psalm 119.160, The word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure it forever. First Peter 1.25, But the word of the Lord endure it forever, 
And this is the word which by the gospel is present to you. Ang point po, hindi kailangan ng Diyos, kagaya yung binasa ni Pastor Gene Kim sa Psalms, hindi niya kailangan ng kahit sino para i-preserve ang kanyang salita. Gagamit ang Panginoon ng mga tao, okay, as He will, para ma-preserve ang kanyang salita. Now, bibigyan natin ng benefit of doubt. If the Catholic Church was used by God to preserve His word, then glory to God pa rin. Pero hindi nangangahulugan that the authority is solely dependent on the church which is the Roman Catholic Church. That is flat wrong because they don't even believe the word of God. Okay? Pag sinasabihan natin sila na they are worshiping Mary, they say, we are not worshiping Mary, we are venerating her. Okay? So bahala sila doon. Pero ang kanilang kiniklaim, Mary was a perpetual virgin, Mary was a mother of God, that is not even true. Kaya nga prayer nila, Holy Mary, Mother of God. That is not true. Okay? Hindi totoo yun. Nanay siya ng Diyos. <laughs> okay? Nanay siya, the man, Christ Jesus, not God. Alright? Now, the key to understand the scripture more and more is this. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study to show thyself a proven to God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Yan ang paraan para malaman mo kung anong tamang interpretation. Not from any religion, not from the Catholic Church. Just need the word of God rightly divided, especially you must have the right Bible. That is the King James Bible. Okay? Bakit? Dahil pinaserve ng Diyos ang kanyang salita for the King James Bible sa panahon po na ito. At bakit kaya maraming galit sa King James Bible? I hope to see you in the next vlog and we will explain more and more about this King James issue, about the religious issue, about sa mga doktrina na lumalaga na po sa paligid. Salamat sa panonood nyo at God bless.